What's up, everybody? My name is Danbot, and this is King's Quest. Uh, some of you older gamers may remember the original King's Quest and Space Quest series. They were made by Sierra back in the early 90s, late 80s. Uh, really interesting games. They were kind of the progenitors of the point-and-click adventure. They were known for having a really quirky sense of humor. Uh, and now, King's Quest is back, thanks to Sierra and... The Odd Gentleman. So let's take a look at the game options real quick. Uh, subtitles, volume, separate sliders for everything. Texture quality, full screen, V-Sync, and res. Not a lot. Um, you've got an okay amount of resolutions. You've got on and off for V-Sync, which I wish I'll turn off. you got full screen on and off. There is no borderless window mode, which is aggravating. And you've got high, medium, and low for your textures. Um, this is irritating because this is an Unreal Engine 4 game, and it looks fairly nice, but it's got an interesting art style, but it's not a huge deal, but it also is irritating to just have only the most basic of options. Uh, controls, you've got your Xbox gamepad here, which is ironic because that's an old-school 360 pad, and I'm actually using an Xbox One pad. Uh, you can also play with mouse and keyboard. It works just fine. I tend to prefer the gamepad. Control of vibration on and off. Yes, it's off, thank God. Invert the y-axis, why would you do that? And mouse sensitivity. So, that's about it. Um, I have actually beaten this uh, on stream. You can find those videos. I'll link the playlist below if you want to see the full game. But in the interests of avoiding spoilers, I'm going to go ahead and try to start a new game? Question mark? Nope, that's not going to work. Exit to main menu. All progress will be lost. Um, let's change the slot too. There we go. Begin. So, a word of warning: if you don't want any spoilers, do not watch this. Uh, watch this. Just listen to me, and I'll talk about the game for you. Uh, very hard to do a game like this without spoiling something, but I felt that this game was good enough and interesting enough as a revival that uh, it would be worth it. So here we are playing as Graham, and let's take a look at this well. Though very much point and click ask here, you uh, walk around and you look at things, you have your inventory and your look icon, and we'll turn ye old bucket here. The first thing you'll notice is the art style. It's uh, kind of a cell shade. It's uh, very fantasy, very vibrant colors. Uh, you'll take my word for the vibrant colors because this is a little dull right now, but it's certainly got a distinct art style, and I really I like it. Back years, but it was the last place left to look. Uh, this game also has a all-star voice cast. Uh, Graham is voiced by Christopher Lloyd, at least his older version. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, the basic gist of the game has you helping Graham on his quests and solving various puzzles and environmental hazards and basically helping him stay alive because he's kind of an idiot. It was oh, not exactly go. as I remembered it, but it wasn't all that different either. So the uh, Elder Graham will narrate uh, certain parts of the story for you. As you can see, the art style, the background there, really kind of stunning. It's just very, very high fantasy, very cool looking. So I do like the way that Graham moves. He's got some nice animations. His walking is a little, I don't know, stiff sometimes. Too hard. Traps and discarded the lost treasure. I would have to turn one and see what happened. So, I already know the answer to this puzzle, but I'll show off one of the mechanics I like in the game right here. And that's what would have happened if I turned the left switch. But since I am here telling this story, you already know that I pulled the right one. So, what you're seeing here is older Graham telling the story of this adventure to his granddaughter, and this is the way the game handles death. Um, 
when you make a mistake, it simply takes you back to them, and he makes a comment about how that's not what he actually did, or something along those lines, and I find it to be a fairly nice way to uh, add some humor to failure states in this game, of which there are many, but they're never really punishing. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, Grandpa. I don't remember this part of the story. Beds hanging from stalactites? Well, we got there, Gwendolyn. Don't worry. No detail in this story will be overlooked. Now, where was I? Ah, yes. As I treaded through the river of rumbling trundles, I feared I knew the source of that deafening wind. Also, if you don't like puns, this may not be the game for you because it's very pun heavy. Uh, humor is a large part of the game. It's very well written. Uh, there's many moments where I nestle beneath a slumbering pile of teeth. The claws was... Fable Mirror! Oh, so you remember this part of the story. Well, dragons are my favorite. You want to tell this part? Yeah! <laughs> there are many parts where I found myself me. genuinely Greatest laughing out loud at this game. Daventry, on a quest to return his stolen mirror. A gigantic, hulking... Beast of a dragon is the last thing in my way to... In my way to... <laughs> my way to... Add a shinier hat to my collection. Alright, so... Here we are. Now, of course, this is your first puzzle. I tried to turn that crazy contraption, but it was missing a handle. Someone tampered with it, creating some silly conundrum. I had the game often pokes fun at itself in video game conventions, which is refreshing. Never in two fourth wall breaking of manner, but they definitely use the fact that this is a, being, a story being told to a little girl to pretty great effect. Volumes of old books with foreboding titles clutter the shelves of that strange bedroom. How to tame a dragon, breaking the spirit of hideous beasts, amateur spells to impress your friends. I end. So you'll notice some kind of wonky texture work here and there. So, um, the missing handle was booby trapped? What did you do? Well, I used my cleverness to outsmart the trap. <laughs> then I used my cleverness to hide. <laughs> Uh, so this is the first chapter in a five-chapter installment. Now, you can buy the season pass on Steam for, I believe, $39.99. Uh, after playing through the first chapter, if the others hold up to this level of quality and writing, I would definitely say it's worth it. Uh, definitely something you need to keep in mind, though, is this Luckily type of game is... Beast never noticed me in bed. Dragon's eye must be really hard Not to something that everybody would appreciate. I can barely hit a hay bale. It is indeed a, a feat only for skilled archers. So here's one thing that's a little clunky in this game. What um, did you use to fix the broken switch? When you're solving a puzzle, you can't simply interact with it with the A button. You have to, each time you need to use an item, you have to open up your inventory. And sometimes if you're not in the correct spots, it won't work. So uh, it's certainly not a game breaker, but it does take some getting used to. And of course, there's a little questions like the bell got the dragon's attention, but that didn't. The dragon's chains were coiled around a gigantic switch mounted to the cave wall. But you also do get some very cool set piece moments out of that stuff, like this right here, which is just really quite beautiful. After he briefly basked in the sun, the narcoleptic dragon went back to snoring. I'd probably sleep all day too, if Amira was my only friend. Uh oh. You also notice the music in this game is quite good. So. Once you get past this section, you move on to trying to become a Knight of Daventry, because this is basically the intro tutorial. Uh, it's very well done and very fun, but it is basically the intro sequence. 
Now, there you run into some truly unique characters and some really fun puzzles. And the way that this stuff is handled with Graham and his uh, sense of humor and his not quite being all that knightly is very interesting. Uh, you're often challenged to find some really novel solutions to puzzles. And it makes the whole thing very fun. So here we're just gonna sneak around. I did notice when I first played this on stream I was walking very slowly and Graham's walking animation broke so the game's not without its technical problems. That said, it runs perfectly serviceably on uh, relatively good resolution. Uh -oh. The game's not afraid to deal with some darker themes either. There are several moments in the game that will definitely tug at your emotions, uh, especially because they're in such harsh contrast to some of the lighter, harder moments that you find. Whoever designed this trap thought they were pretty clever, but I would probably find a way to hit that unreachable switch. In fact, right up here is a uh, moment from later in the game that's... Uh, I won't spoil, but there's definitely a reason behind it. Okay, so, bow and arrow is not as big a part of the game as you would think, at least from a gameplay perspective. It's uh, definitely a recurring plot device, though. Oh. Let's go, Grim. So you'll definitely find yourself getting attached to the characters and getting into the gameplay. It's one thing I was very surprised at when we played this on stream. Feeding contraption was cobbled together to keep the beast and probably its owner alive. So we have these giant slabs of meat. This puzzle kind of requires you to pay attention in the background down there. So you'll notice that when we spin it, here we go. Now, I'm not going to tell you guys how long it took me to figure this out on my first go, but... <laughs> Suffice it to say, I felt like an idiot when I first uh, figured it out. One thing that's also interesting is Graham and his little magical cape here. He uh, can hide pretty much anything he wants to in that cape as long as he swipes it over the object. fun set piece moments like this as well. And there are several things like this throughout the game. I wouldn't call them quick time events because they don't rely extremely heavily on button presses, but they are welcome diversions from the walking around and very well done. The controls are nice and tight. Uh, this is a little easier actually on a keyboard and mouse as you would assume from the precise targeting. 
I, one thing this game does do is allow you to hot swap between the controller and the mouse and keyboard, so you can actually uh, <laughs> actually make it a little easier. I do enjoy rowing the boat with my uh, hat too. So that was most definitely a quick time event, though. Very fun. They're not overdone. There are only a handful of them in the game. And once again, the music is outstanding in this game. Those arrow shots are also extremely forgiving, which I appreciate. It means the game's not overly harsh about this kind of stuff. And... You gotta love the little touches, like the hat catch. I find this sequence very fun. You have to watch for the beds on the ceiling as you're running like an idiot. And here's an interesting part of the game right here coming up. There is a point where the, the game mirror safely in my possession. I dreamt of a the game gives you uh, rewarded with three and choices, and they will come. each affect the uh, game further down the line, although we don't know how yet, because only the first chapter is out. In that split second, I had three choices in front of me. Any would clear my path to safety, and all would have rippling consequences. So, uh, for reference, the first time through I shot the bell. the rope, but with the last of my strength, I climbed out of the well and headed back to the castle. Ever since the magic mirror returned, its reflections have warned the kingdom of danger, kept our family safe, and it has exposed many troublesome crumbs tangled in my beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King Edward was so proud that you returned his lost treasure that he made you king. Everyone knows that part. Now, can we get back to that dragon? Gwendolyn, there is so much more to my stories than dragons. So once so again, this is the storytelling mechanic. It's older Graham. The action and across its, brim. it's so actually very well worked into the story. All right, let's get back to the dragon. Tell me everything. Like, why did you set the dragon free, even though he was trying to eat you? I set him free because, well, over the years I realized that the dragon was not the despicable, hideous beast Daventry had made him out to be. He was just a caged animal that was never shown any kindness. On that day, I forgave the dragon for his atrocious past. You have such a bizarre way of making friends, Grandpa. I guess I do, too. I'm known as Gwendolyn the Popular back home, but only to my stuff bunnies. I've always found it better. So, <laughs> very, very subtle change in the dialogue right there, but it's uh, nice to see that the game does have some sense of consequence. Grandpa needs to rest. Gwendolyn, 
It's way past your bed. So guys, that is the f a look at the first chapter of King's Quest. There's much, much more, probably about four and a half more hours of gameplay to it. It's quite the fun game. I'll link it in Steam below. It, uh, it looks like the kind of thing you want to try if you like kind of a revival of old school point and click with a great sense of humor and some really fun characters. I'd definitely give it a look. Uh, Till next time, thanks for watching. My name is Dinebot. I'll see you later. Like what you saw? Click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Or click on one of these other videos.